Hey music makers, today's episode is sponsored by Caulfield Cables, an awesome boutique family-owned business out of California making high quality, high fidelity, and beautiful instrument cables. They can do all kinds of custom orders, whatever you need, and they're happy to announce the launch of their new HD series of cable. If you saw our giveaway a couple weeks ago, you saw this beautiful cable that's made with Summer Spirit LLX, has the flexibility and durability you need, as well as the distinction of being the lowest capacitance cable on the market, keeping your signal clear at an amazing 15.8 picofarad per feet. It's perfect for work in the studio or on the stage and combined with the colors that they're known for you'll have a cable that will stand out from everything else so be sure to check out Caulfield Cables their info is in the show notes for their website and their Instagram page and give them a shout send them some make more music family love tell them that Chris sent you all right on with the show Hey, music makers, welcome back to Make More Music, the podcast connects you to music and one another. My name's Chris. I'm a board-certified music therapist, and we interview all kinds of different music professionals to show you the pathways to making a life and a living and a career you love. So today I've got a cool chat for you. I'm glad that we're rounding out the end of season two. I'm planning some cool things ahead and definitely going to take a season break this time. It's not just going to flow straight into season three. Um talking with some people about some cool stuff we can offer all of it's in the works can't tell things yet but i've got all kinds of cool things that i'm going to be announcing soon so please follow on instagram at make.more.music and you'll be in the know with the things that are going on if you don't like instagram you can join our mailing list and that is in the show notes as well so today i'm super pumped to share with you an interview with randall taylor aka amulets And if you don't know who he is, a podcast is not going to do it justice. You need to go on YouTube or his Instagram and see because he, even in his bio, says that he's audio and visual artist. So uh, I got really into him as I'm getting into tape loops and things like that. He is like the internet king of tape loops. So um, it's kind of like noise, drone, ambient, interesting guitar, tape loops, cool, creative uh, blending the world between visual art and music. And um, we got a new old stock music shout out of his at the end. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. This is Randall Taylor, Amulets on Make More Music. Randall, Amulets, I don't know which one I should call you, but either way, I'm excited to have you here, bro. We've already been chatting for a few minutes, so this is going to be a great one, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get into all of your story, you ready to do a couple of rapid fire questions? Sure, rapid fire. Okay, let's do rapid fire. All right, Bandcamp, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you listen to, what's the last track you listen to? The last track I listened to? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been really into this song. Um, Oh God, it's uh, by this band called Great Grandpa. Mm. Um, and it's this uh, song called Digger. Okay. And it's just like, I don't know. It, it's kind of like, um, it's got like this country twang to it. <laughs> like okay. it's got like okay. this like folky country-ish thing, but then it has like this beautiful like slide guitar and it gets kind of like Ooh. shoegazy. And it's just like an interesting blend of a lot of... um genres i don't know i guess i, I like just, that i have been I like, like really lot. like it's been a, like a song that's been really like challenging me that like i keep listening to i'm like man this song is so interesting um that's cool yeah and um i've been uh listening to that song a lot lately but yeah that was a like last listen great i'm gonna listen to that on the way home i play pedal steel as well myself yeah so. i love a good you know pedal steel slide guitar i think that's all just like it's such a beautiful sound that's awesome, man. Well, next, you can take this as as like philosophically or as artistically as you want to take it, or you can take it kind of plain. But if you were an instrument, what would you be? If I was an instrument, oh God, <laughs> um, that's it. That's really interesting. I mean, <laughs> it's it's hard. I think I like gravitate toward guitar as my instrument and like the thing that I play the most. But I don't, I don't know if I, I think if, I that, if that truly represents you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Does a guitar truly represent me? <laughs> um, 
if you were a guitar, let's let's just narrow it there. If you were a guitar, what type of guitar would you be? Um, I I feel like being a guitar is just like uh, it's, this just comes down to like my personal preference of being like, well, I own a couple Telecasters and I love them, and That's like, okay. I feel like I would be a Telecaster, but I don't even think I'd be a guitar. I think I'd be like a xylophone or something. Ooh, okay. I don't know. Like maybe a marimba. I don't know. I like that. Big you range, know? interesting sounds. I like yeah, that. I like I like it. I mean, I don't own a marimba, but I, I would love marimba. I would love to be a marimba. I would love to, would love to exist as a marimba, maybe, you know? I don't that, know. That totally maybe, works. Yeah, I'll I'll say that for now and then you know, I'll I'll get back to you if I ever become a marimba and and, and see how it goes. You're like, actually, this totally sucks. I just yeah, I like, I you know, I know, yeah, like yeah. I chose marimba. I'm just getting like like nailed with a mallet all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, I it's like, I didn't think that through. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, this can be anything at all, but you know, I don't think in March we thought we'd still be here. So yeah. during all this craziness, what's something that's been inspiring you recently? During all this craziness, I mean, I think that, um, honestly, like with with everything, especially since March, I've just been going, um, I've just been outside a lot, and I've and I mm-hmm. spent a lot of time, you know, when we in the, in lieu of not being able to do much of anything, I just been going <laughs> on a lot of walks by myself, and um, I sit and lay in the park a lot <laughs> these days, nice. um, and I've really been taking a lot of time for myself, just to like you know, take care of myself during these days and, you know, without a lot of other things to do and, and just like sitting around and like, I don't know, waiting for things to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been just taking myself on a walks and into the park and I think it's been a real, for me, it's just been nature has always been really, uh, you know, influential and inspiring, but I think I've taken even more time to notice some of the smaller things and the subtleties of, of everything and like the, the constant fluctuation around us, but then even those like fluctuations and changes within our own environment and like just been focusing a lot on, on that. And I think that um, it's been really inspiring just to like kind of slow down and, and, and notice some, some more of that. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you're in like Portland area, right? Yeah. Yeah. I live in, I live in Portland. And so it's, it's, you know, it's beautiful here. The Springs are, is, is beautiful. The summer is beautiful. And so I've just kind of been like, absorbing all of that and um yeah it's been really it's been really beautiful yeah awesome to have that opportunity because i yeah. bet it's equally frustrating to be busy and not able to access totally some of those things when you live yeah. somewhere as cool as portland yeah yeah absolutely and i and i definitely feel like i mean i feel the the lack of um a lot of things to do you know due to a pandemic and the, and just not having like a ton of work coming in that, you know, it's kind of like, well, summer is slow and I guess I'm taking like a summer break um, yeah. here. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you, you got to spin it or else, you know, people will go crazy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, on the next line, you know, you've got this whole niche that you've developed in, like we were talking before we even started, just, ha- I bet so many people ask you, because they're inspired about things like tape loops. So whether it's that or whether it's how you keep your takeout warm on the way home, what's a pro <laughs> tip or a hack that you practice that uh, people should do in their life? Um, I, you know, I, <clears throat> I do get a lot of questions about, um, you know, tape looping, a lot of technical aspects. Um, I, there's like a couple of things I like to tell people and that I really try to live by it and, and and try to do my best and it's like some of some of the things are that like with gear i mean tape loops cassette players with the correct types of tape we get into a lot of like gear specifics and technicalities Mm -hmm. of like what you should buy what you should use and honestly like when i first started i i you know had some used tapes from goodwill i had like a walkman that i've also bought at goodwill and like the investment was so low that i didn't mind like destroying it yeah, messing around with it, you know, and I think that there is, um, I think that can be said for a lot of things when you're when you're in your studio, when you're in your art, you're trying to make this thing, and you get obsessed with the thing that you think you need to make it, mm-hmm. and a lot of that, you know, is is self imposed. A lot of that, like, you know, we think we need the best mm-hmm. thing to make this thing, 
well, we need to get this pedal to be like this band. Yeah. Or, or Reddit, or you know, yeah, and you know, and gear like, slug. yeah, and like, and I'm, and I'm like guilty. I'm totally obsessed with gear, and I love like learning about it and playing with all sorts of new gear. But I also try to keep keep it realistic to like, what do I really need? And like, working within limitations can be really powerful too. Of like, this is all oh, I yeah. have, and I made an album with this. Like, that's great. That's super um, cool. And I, so I think that's always like, you know, limitations are good. Um, using what you have is good finding creative ways to like use all that stuff is great and like I think uh, the second part of that is just like you know um, it's showing up it's showing up for yourself Mm. and showing up for your art and it's like uh, you know every day is not going to be the most inspiring day but like if you Mm. if you pick up an instrument every day and play it a little bit like work on a track I don't know record something that you don't even think you're going to use I think sometimes it's like putting in that that work to show up like things, it helps that creativity along. Like, I think some sometimes we wait for creativity to be like the biggest thing that's gonna hit us, and and it, it, it I don't think it always works like that. You know, sometimes it does. No. Sometimes you get a wave of creativity. Sometimes it's kind of annoying where you sit down and you just kind of mess around at something and nothing comes out. But at least you sat down for like you know half an hour and tried, mm-hmm. and captured all those little sparks that yeah. might add up. Yeah, Later. you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when you come back to it, and you're like, "Oh, this was actually interesting," and and when you get inspired by that or some someone else's sounds or you know things that you you hear along the way, that inspires creativity. Like you can just record mm, something totally. yourself and you know come back to it and you're like, "Wow, this is this was garbage before, but now I like this, and now I'm gonna <laughs> add more to it." You know? Yeah. Well, to transition hard from inspiring walks in nature and good philosophical <laughs> stances to art, what's your go-to junk food? Go-to junk food? Uh, okay, my go-to junk food is uh, I really like um, salt and vinegar chips, but specifically mm. uh, kettle brand uh, like salt and vinegar chips. They're just like um, uh, the the yeah the kettle chips are just are just so good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, man. yeah. chips in general. I feel. Yeah, like. I love chips, but yeah, I just yeah salt and vinegar chips. I buy those every week. I love them. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm definitely going through a like one of those taste bud transitions times because mm-hmm. I've always disliked salt and vinegar, and I'm starting to be like, man, you know, this is this is all right. I like yeah. this. I think salt and vinegar is a, a, a chip flavor that most people are not into. Like you're you're either like really into it or you're very like, true. I hate it. I hate yeah. it. Yeah, you know? very, very I, true. I don't know if there's a lot of people that are like, meh, eh, it's okay. I think most people don't like it. I think it's a little too strong. But, you know, sometimes you just got to be bold, right? <laughs> yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, lastly, for the the rapid fires – What's a person, a project, or an organization, somebody that's doing something cool that you think deserves a shout out? Oh wow! Um, I, I guess like I, I don't know. Like I, um, there's so many people doing so many great creative things. I, I don't know. I'm very fortunate to have a lot of like really supportive and creative friends. And um, I don't know. Like my my one f- good friend um, Eric Niffler. He's a he's a great uh, graphic designer and he does a lot of I've worked with him on artwork and he does artwork for lots of uh, bands and brands and labels and stuff I think it's just like I, if anything I just think that as a friend he's just like a good person to like you know as a as a creative um, person just to bounce ideas off of and talk to and stuff and like I I, I, I just love the idea that you know when we work, like this and, and it can be off, often very like siloed mm-hmm. that like you know to have like you know like co-workers like that or, or whatever um that are also you know independent and creative and, and doing their own thing too that you get to like i don't know, have those opportunities to like you know just bounce ideas off each other and like give each other feedback i think that's so important yeah and somebody with kind of a different slice of what they're good at yeah too. yeah for sure and like he's he's also a musician too and it's like and it's great like we can talk about like art and music and and and, and bullshit about lots of stuff and it's always mm-hmm. like um yeah it's always great like i think that's one of been one of the more um the the thing that has come out of like being like self-employed 
that I realized like how important that is to have. Like when you remove yourself from like a workforce, you no longer have that like built in social aspect. Mm, true. And so like you have to like kind of work at that, you know, yourself. And but there's definitely community uh, around that. And it's just like nice to find that I feel like I'm finally at a job doing the job that I love and, and like and enjoy, you know. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, well, that's a good transition then into, you know, all the things that got you roughly to here. But I want to start on the way back. Sure. When you think back as a little kid, you know, maybe even some of your very first memories. What mm-hmm. were some of your musical memories? Who was influential to you? And, you know, what music was influential to you as a kid? Um. Wow, I, that's that's a great question. I mean, if if I'm going really far back, I feel like one of my earliest memories is my dad playing mm-hmm. um, records, and he had he was really he's just like a rock and roll guy. Like he sweet he had a lot of like uh, Aerosmith and like Kiss records and like uh, solid and like van halen and like i remember <clears throat> um i remember really liking van halen <laughs> nice <laughs> so like, that's great um and uh yeah just like you know dancing around uh and like pretending to play guitar um that's cool but i think when i when i really um got into music you know at, as like a young teenager you know i was playing clarinet in band for a while and and i didn't really love that <laughs> and I think around like seventh grade, I started learning guitar and it really like transitioned a lot for me. Like it was really an instrument that I found a liking to and like a little creative outlet with. Um, I formed, you know, a couple bands in high school with my friends. And I just I, I think that guitar was just like kind of like changed my life from that on. And then, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I wasn't, um, you know, growing up. Uh, you know, I wasn't listening to like Brian Eno. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was, you know, I was into a lot of like, you know, emo and pop punk and like hardcore. And then I got into Sweet. metal and like post rock. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that like that's really like the more defining background for me. I think that's like just like, um, you know, w- those kind of bands and, and it's just the idea of being in a band and, 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 creating um yeah just like powerful and emotional music and, and yeah you know i think that was always um yeah it's super inspiring well i can definitely hear the transition from you know emo pop punk you know <laughs> tracing that but then like you said i mean maybe it's because i fell i have a very parallel story you know like middle school trumpet seventh grade guitar mm-hmm. but yeah um I can hear how that transition slowly gets into the more experimental, you know, like uh, Godspeed, you black emperor and totally. like yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. I can see how that led to some of your things now, but I have to know what were some of the names of these bands that you were, you were in. Oh, some of the names that I was in. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think yeah. my first band we were, we were named uh, yellow five. Okay. And it was, it was, it was a very, <laughs> Um, very creative of us, you know, as like junior high students, uh, that like yellow five was like, I think the artificial food coloring in Mountain Dew. Nice. And and we're like, and I, I guess it had been rumored that like yellow five, like made you sterile or something. I remember that. I remember that. Right. Like, I I guess that was like a thing. And we thought that was funny. And like, (laughs) very like, yeah, very like 2000. To 2003. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like early 2000s, like, yeah. like dumbasses. We're like, <laughs> yellow five. And so, like while you're watching like an episode of Jack. Or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, you know, this is like a Johnny Knoxville band or something. Like, yeah. like, um, so, uh, right we, after CKY, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love CKY. It was great. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think that those were, um, yeah, that was like the one of the first bands and, that was silly. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. We did a the skulls. You couldn't be more generic of a Misfits reference. Was my oh yeah uh, first one, and then I think my first song I ever wrote was "School Sucks" with an X instead of CKS. Oh, that's so punk you know? of you. I love yeah, that. Yeah, super 
Super fun. School sucks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in, now I have a master's degree. So let's see what changed. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. A universal uh, theme. School sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. No so can argue that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, your transition into thinking, I want to do this. I want to be an artist, uh, make art and all the things you do now, what were some of the the pathways in between, like you said, leaving, you know, a job, leaving those kind of things, and now kind of, like you said, being self-employed and, and going into that, what, what were all the steps between there? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, deciding to be an artist is like a, that's an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. I mean, it just happens, but you no, know, what no, were the totally. I mean, I think there is a point where you kind of like decide that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think for me, and we talked a little bit earlier about like going to like music school. Mm-hmm. And yeah, did you do the traditional route at all? No, like I wanted, I was interested in it, but in the same way you were saying of like, I don't know if I want to go like learn classical guitar or be trained classically in anything that, um, you know, I was really into filmmaking uh, in high school. Sweet. And much like like the jackass type era, like I was making like stupid videos with my friends, and then I started making like films, and I got really into like the idea of like being a filmmaker. Cool. And um, I went to school at at the University of Buffalo, and they had like a a media studies program that had like film and like art. Uh, and like digital art and like mm-hmm. music. It like it kinda like did kinda a catch lot of, all catch yeah. all for a lot, but it was it was a much weirder it wasn't like a film school, it's definitely like an art school like catch all type thing. And like going there I like really kind of expanded um what like my understanding of like you know art was and like could be and like like the what what I wanted to do with myself. And I remember like I was making a lot of like experimental films and I got a lot into a lot of like um, installation art and like different things and um, like I was still playing music and I think that was one of the first times I fused like I like made this like short experimental film and then I like made my own soundtrack to it that mm. was like you know kind of like an ambient experimental track and I got really into that and it was like oh this is something I can do I can like you know marry like my interest in like filmmaking and making videos with with music and um i also got into circuit bending uh, in college too and like was doing a lot of like modified circuits and like opening up like goodwill toys and like trying to like very cool make weird sounds and i think that all kind of like those are early building blocks of like you know of what i do today and like i think that when over the years you know working at different jobs and like being in bands and just trying to like make it work it was um it was uh it was probably like 5 or 6 years ago now um you know at, having looked at like everything i i had done and where i wanted to be um i remember and it, it's it's funny that you like deciding to be an artist cuz i i decided that i wanted to be an artist and i wanted to be a musician and i wanted to do it like in a in mm-hmm. a real real big way in a doubling down kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In a doubling down kind of way in like a, like this kind of like now or never, like I, I had talked about wanting to do this. And so I just decided that I was going to put in all of my effort to try to make this happen and try to make something for myself with this. Um, and it kind of was like, you know, it's the only thing I've ever really wanted to do. And so why not like go all in and try and even then I didn't go all in. I still was like working a full-time job. And then I was like, it got to the point where I was working full-time at home on music and stuff. And I would stay mm-hmm. up late and I was kind of like burning the candle at both ends. Um, but it was just a decision that I made. It was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go for it. And um, I'm going to try really hard to be a musician and like, see if I can do it. Because if I look back on this and, and know that I didn't try, um, that I, I think I would regret it. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, so I kept, I kept working at it and it, things kept moving along. And eventually um, I got to the point like last year where I was able to, yeah, like, yeah, not like not work a full-time job and, and, and try to do this. And um, 
Yeah. Wow. And then, you know, right after you work up all that courage, there's a global pandemic. That yeah. Makes it totally. super hard to do. And, which is really hard uh, to, to think that, like, am I still, is this still the right decision? Am I still going to survive? Like, yeah. Well, I think everybody that weathers this storm is going to be a whole different breed of resilient. I mean, this is like the modern Great Depression, you know, basically. Yeah. We're going through something super weird, but. Absolutely. Um, well, tell me about then kind of a few years back from that, why the kind of imagery and everything that goes along with amulets? Like, where did you first kind of run into that and make that conscious decision that that was your your moniker going forward? Um, it's funny. Amulets was, uh, with, with like all the circuit bent instruments in college, I had this um, band with my friend. And we, I, I call it a band, but we just like would take these instruments and like make a lot of noise, and we we weren't very good, and we <laughs> we, we only played one show ever, and then we broke up. <laughs> hey, that but, sounds like one of my uh, black metal bands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, you have those bands, and we were called um, Amulet at the time. Okay, and it was just I don't know, it, it nothing ever happened with it, and so um, I was home sick um i don't know i guess like six years ago now seven years ago i don't know what I, i'm losing track of time um and i was talking to my friend uh who like we just talked about music a lot and he had made um like a joke harsh noise project mm-hmm. and he put it on band camp and, and i thought it was really funny and i actually thought it was pretty good um, and I was really into the band, uh, Salem. You ever listen to them? Like, like the witch house kind of. I'm not, but it um, sounds super cool. Yeah. It's like a spooky witch house. I don't know where the term witch house came from, but it's like, you know, it's like a dark kind of gothy electronic witch cool. house thing, whatever. Um, and I was like really <laughs> into that band at the time. And so I tried to make like a joke witch house project. And so I recorded a bunch of stuff in GarageBand while I was sick that one day and I put it on Bandcamp and I was like, well, I need a name. And so I called it Amulets and I was like, yeah, that's kind of witchy. Sure. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, works. It works. It works. And I'm like, I just made it plural. And the thing is with that joke is that like some people started like downloading it and I got a couple of like emails that people were like, this is cool. Like I like this stuff a lot. and um it was like a really like interesting moment to be like, well, that was like a joke. Like, I wonder if I'd actually try it harder, if it could be. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and eventually I kind of like, uh, I played a couple shows like that and I f- was feeling, I wasn't like feeling like the music. I like, I feel like the joke had like w- was on me. Cause I was like, I don't know. How you were serving the joke. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if this is my passion. Um, and so I kind of did, like, along with that, at that time, I was, um, you know, I was using, like, you know, GarageBand and, and using a, a DAW like we all do. And, and I felt like I was making all these tracks and I couldn't play them live. And there was so mm-hmm. much multi-tracking that I just got really frustrated with the computer. And so I was trying to look at alterna- al- al- alternatives to the mm-hmm. computer um, of trying to, like, you know, figure out like a setup that I could use without having to rely on a computer all the time. And so I started looking at, you know, just like everyone else is watching a lot of YouTube videos. And I was really admiring like a lot of Eurorack stuff at the time. And it was really expensive. It had just come out. And like, I really liked how people could open up their little like suitcases and like have all their wires plugged in and like play a show. And so when I started experimenting with tapes, um, I I took that uh, idea and tried to make some kind of setup where I could like have a bunch of tapes and just have a hardware setup that I could open up and play. Mm. And, and that's where like my little like suitcase of drone, like Very cool. recording rig came about. Yeah. I love that documentary that you and your friend did on your, your tour. Thanks. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, it's a ridiculous little tour. <laughs> it's like a t- tongue in cheek. And that kind of leads me to, uh, before we kind of get into a little bit about, tapes and stuff. I bet as someone who has done art installations and 
kind of the background of the type of music that you're involved in, I bet you've played in some pretty weird places. Oh what yeah. Are some, what are some strange places you played? Um, I think it was a, there was a really weird, um, <laughs> it's a real weird basement in like Oklahoma, I believe. Um, I forget the name, but it was, uh, it's like one of those shows, you know, it was an early tour and I had booked all these tours myself mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was just grabbing shows like along the route and stuff and I ended up playing the show. Um, and like, you know, no one did a real great job, uh, advertising it and <laughs> myself included. And, you know, it ended up being like, no one came and we were just like the three bands playing for each other in this, this like like real 70s looking like shag rug wall nice. like basement and it was so strange it was just very it's a very weird like what is happening right now yeah, yeah. you know like there's been some you know <laughs> there's been some weird weird venues i don't know like i think that like the there's a real i know people talk about like you know, you got to like tour and you got to like cut your teeth and like touring mm-hmm. and like you got to play in front of nobody. And like, that's how you get. And I do think there is a there is something about that that like really it does strengthen you a little bit of being like, wow, this is this is bad. <laughs> like, no, yeah. Nobody came. Like, no. Yeah. Well, and there's something, too, about like you're doing something, you know, uh, risky. You know, yeah. you're, you're putting yourself yeah. out there, which is it's kind of a catch 22 because you're in a space where you can be risky and do whatever because no one's there, but it's also defeating at the same time. Oh so. yeah. It's, it's, it's humbling to know that you're like, well, no, <laughs> no one, no one cares about you uh, by default. And yeah. I think we're all just trying to do is like make people care about what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love the like working man solution to a, you know, a Brian Eno rig. Uh, a, a, So tell me a little bit about, for you, why tapes, why, you know, hacking the way that you do, and uh, just a little bit about maybe for someone who has no idea, you know, what you do, they're just a person that's tuning in, describe a little bit about, like, how you might do a setup for a performance. Yeah, um, well, I kind of stumbled upon tape... um... So I, I've been like, you know, I think like everyone else, like I used to like record stuff off the radio and like I like tapes and, you know, I was I always had like mixed tapes and stuff. And like mm-hmm. over the years that like, you know, turned into CDs and like MP3s and whatever. And then kind of coming back to tapes um, it was really interesting as like a tool because I, I remember watching um, this YouTube video with Alessandro Cortini and he has like it's a rig rundown video and he goes through his like four track recorder and how he's using it. Uh, and he has all these chord drones recorded on each track, and he's able to like play the chord progression. Mm-hmm. And I was really fascinated by that, and I thought that was such a beautiful sound. That, um, yeah, from there, I just decided to try using tapes in my setup, and 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 I think from my old, from what I was doing with amulets before, like I talked about with like the whole witch house project, mm-hmm. you know, I did like a hard pivot into like, okay, I want to use tapes now, and I want to change the music I'm making. And I want to like really um, focus on on this tape sound and like what I can do within it within this. And I think that like the the design and sound of cassettes is just like makes sense to me. Like I think it's just mm-hmm. like, such a simple tool. Like and it, it, it is just a tool at that. You know, like you can put anything on it. You know, whether you're using a Walkman or a four track or whatever. Like you know, it's just a, a loop of tape. Um, that has like infinite possibilities. And I think that over the years, it's just been this like exploration of like, how far can I, can I take this like little strip of magnetic tape? Like how, like how much can I cut up this like, you know, tape player? How much can I like, like warp this actual physical tape before, you know, Mm -hmm. it it sounds like nothing. Um, Yeah. You know, and, and all of those experiments have just been like, you know, I think it's my own curiosity for sure. But also just like, I think that it has become, um, yeah, my, as an artist, like my medium of choice just to like, you know, explore and like, and know that like, you know, it wasn't, 
the thing that <laughs> you know I I went out and, and chose to to be like I'm gonna be the this tape guy on the internet, but um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it just kind of happened, and like I don't know. The more I use it, the more I'm fascinated by it. The more like I get to like you know spend all these years just like exploring it, and um, I think with within my own setup, you know, of like trying to figure out how to make music with it and like music I I like and and want to make with it it just became this like um like this engineering challenge of like how do I okay so I have like this tape and like what else can I use mm -hmm. um to like facilitate this tape and to make bigger sounds and and I think one of the um my early experiments was I played a couple shows with just like the tape loops and um you know, moving the knobs and sliders, like I felt like, like I didn't really know what I was doing, but I'm like, okay, I, I, I get the concept. But there was something about the performance aspect that really, um, I don't know, I felt really uncomfortable by. And mm -hmm. I, I realized it, it was part of it was because I, you know, I wasn't playing guitar. Like I've played guitar all my life in bands. Yeah, it's super vulnerable. To, it's yeah, super yeah. vulnerable. Like I'm standing up there and I don't have anything that I can make a sound immediately with. And so, um, that's when I started introducing guitar over the top of the tape loops. And I realized that like, well, if I'm looping this tape, if I can loop the guitar, then I can go back to the tape and vice versa. And I can kind of bounce back and forth in a set and kind of change these two sounds and blend them together. Um, and I think that changed everything. It was, it was yeah. in the, the, the and exponential options too. Yeah. It's yeah, like totally. So like between all of the tapes, all the effects in with the tapes and all of the, all of my pedal board and my guitar, like now I can create whole, you know, sonic landscapes, like instantaneously. So that is awesome. Well, for the person who is interested, like I was telling you before we started, I went on Craigslist, found some lady selling an old recorder. I've already started to hack it a little bit. I had to figure out how to remove the erase head to get a little to, so I didn't get a gap in recording and mm -hmm. things like that. So for the people that see what you're doing and see some of your videos, where would you tell people to go first and try first? What are some things you would do? I mean, if, if you can, like, and I don't know if they're <clears throat> like all open yet, but like, I mean, Goodwill's thrift stores, I think there are, they are the best places that I found. I mean, you can definitely go on eBay, um, but I just don't, I mean, for me, and I think this might be just thrifting in general, there's part of the fun and the thrill mm, of like the hunt. I love like, thrifting, yeah. Of like finding the thing, like, you know, there's, you know, anyone can go and order anything online and with the immediacy of it and, and be like, I found exactly what I wanted right away. And like, that's fine. But like, I think that with like thrifting and finding those treasures, like when we're talking about equipment that hasn't been made in 20, 30, 40 years uh, to find something like that is so special. And like, you know, the part of the thrill of the hunt and, 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 and just looking at like, you know, consignment shops and thrift stores and estate sales and like garage sales, like even going on Craigslist and like pick, finding a good deal on something uh, still, you know, very fun. And like, I think that also with that, you don't know the condition of these things and you have to be prepared to like, you know, try yeah. to fix it a little bit, try to like mess with it, you know, know that you didn't buy something that's new out of the box and it just works. Like it's, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's got, it's got, you know, a lot of character <laughs> to it and it's gonna, it might give you some problems, but that's part of the fun of it too. Super cool. Yeah. I think that thrifting, the other thing is like, because of the rise of popularity of a lot of you know, different, you know, vinyl and tape and different stuff like that. It's kind of funny that you mentioned that too, because Goodwill might be the only place you can get stuff cheap because online people are still yes. selling it for expensive because they know that other people are looking for that kind of stuff. Totally. Like, I mean, I, I think of like four track recorders now mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they've gone up in price a lot. And it's like, nuts. Yeah, like and reverb. Like, yeah, yeah, you're spending as much as you would for you're spending more than an interface, like yeah, a beginner totally. level interface. And like as I looked for them, I'm like, wow, they got so expensive. And and you know, like I have people yelling at me too. Them like, like, well, you didn't fucking help. Like you didn't help <laughs> yeah. of these things. 
You're and like, like the Josh Scott of tapes. Yeah, like oh right, ruining you know, the market. Yeah, I didn't like. I'm <laughs> like I, this is. I'm part of that problem. <laughs> so. That's okay. It's okay. That's a good problem, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just you know we're all victims of capitalism sometimes. So you know, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, um, what about things that you have on the horizon? I know shows and things are obviously paused at least for a while but what what other things do you have coming out that people should be looking for um well i'm working on a on a new record and so that's been fun and uh you know during quarantine it's been coming out in in a different way and stuff and i think that um yeah i'm kind of working on that and i'm looking forward to releasing new music um yeah tours uh you know i had a couple tours canceled this summer which i was looking forward to bummer um, yeah, this it is a bummer the way things go for sure. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was not, not great, but, um, let's see, what else do I have coming up? Um, well, you just released some old material too, right? At the kind of back a couple of months ago in quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. I did one of those, uh, for the band camp Friday. Um, like one of the first ones I released some, an older like EP. I had kind of been like sitting on. Yeah, that um, one gives me a lot of Godspeed You Black Emperor vibes. Yeah, yeah. That one's really good. Yeah, people were like really into it, which I was very happy that I released it because, you know, I had kind of this and like, yeah, it was it was like a tape that fell through. And so I just had this record and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But super, um, super cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I kind of think like, what big things are on I don't our, think anybody has big things on the horizon right? yet, unless you're Taylor Swift and dropping That's true. Like, quarantine things, albums. I have no big things. Uh, <laughs> you know, just trying to, yeah, just trying to figure it out day by day, I guess. Yeah, I just transitioned back into working at the office, and uh, it was funny. As soon as that happened, our facilities manager was like, can you tell me uh, what dates you want to do for summer camp 2021? It was like, LOL, you're asking me for that right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> does anyone know if 2021 yeah, yeah. is going to actually start? How can you like, I can't plan it a month, two months, let alone a year ahead. Like, that's yeah. In March, I was planning for April. I knew what was going to happen in April, and then that just became a joke. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, awesome, man. Before we wrap up, kind of one of the last questions I always like to ask is why do you and would you encourage people to make more music? I mean, I feel like I make music because I have to. Not yeah. that I have to, but I feel like I I need to. There is a compulsion to make music. There is an obsession with finding the right sound. There is like a a drive to create and express myself through music and like things that I I'm thinking, I'm feeling like feelings I don't understand, you know, like just the, the way that I can like, in the way that like words fail me a lot, I think that I translate that into music and try to mm. like create something that is a feeling or a memory or like, you know, just um, my reaction to the world and like trying to create something beautiful and like, you know, I don't know. No, um, I totally, yeah. I think that visceral, like, compulsion is anyone that does make music gets that at least to some extent yeah yeah and it, and it's just something that like you know like happens and like takes over and like you know there's things i listen to that i make that i don't remember how i made or like mm. it happened in such a way that felt you know so organic or, or something that it was just you know it just came out that way but um you know i and i think that like we all can find that it, um not necessarily with with music, but with anything. I mean, with 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 art, with painting, with For sure. you know, with, with whatever creative outlet and hobby you find dr yourself drawn to. I think that there is that release that we all need of like putting our time and energy and emotions into something that that feels rewarding and productive. And and whether you show that to someone, whether you sell it. Whether you like it's just for yourself, you know, I think it's it's just like something we all need. Yeah, man, totally. Well, I don't think a 
uh, 45, 50 hour long minute chat, it does justice to a lot of the things you do. So I want you to tell <laughs> my people when they're surfing the web, where do they, where can they find you and where do you want them to look for all the stuff you do? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm like, you know, I'm all over the internet. Um, but, uh, I think biggest things are like for it to see like a lot of my videos, and stuff it's uh, on Instagram and YouTube, and they're both at uh, Amulet's Music. And uh, yeah, you can stream all my albums on Spotify and on Bandcamp. And yeah, I think those are the, the big ones. Solid. Well, I'll yeah. send people there. They can keep an eye out for all the things you've got going on. Hopefully, we'll all have big news soon. So yeah. Oh, and I'll I'll give myself a plug too. If yeah. If you want to support what I do or if you want more resources or if you like, I don't know, you know, tipping artists, <laughs> you can, yeah. uh, they can join my Patreon too. Mm. And that's um, patreon.com slash amulets music. And you've got a pretty like thriving Patreon community it looks like too. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's awesome. It, yeah, more and more people are joining and like we're trying to like, you know, build a little community around it and stuff and you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to, to get feedback on that and have like a little, like, yeah, a little tape family, I guess. Yeah. And that, and I think if anybody is super fascinated and is listening, cause they like you, I think you even offer some cool, like one-on-one -on -one coaching for like di different levels and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. That. I have like coaching, uh, like email coaching and like, I have one-on-one -on -one lessons that I do. I have a couple of students that it's really great to like connect with, with people and have like a one-on-one -on -one lesson. And like, I've been helping um, some people like just, you know, take their, their project to another level and kind of give feedback and do whatever, honestly, like if you want to learn technical things about guitar or pedals or tapes, or if you just want to like talk about music or whatever, like I, I have uh, time slots available for that too. Very cool, man. Well, Randall, I appreciate your time. I'm glad the joke of amulet, has turned into all it has. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> all right. Well, we'll. I feel like we left a lot of things on the table. Maybe one day we'll do a follow up because it's yeah. a good chat. So for sure, absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, for Randall slash Amulets and make more music. Remember, give more grace, share more love, and make more music. All right, music makers, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Randall. And if you did, you should go check out all things Amulets at all the links in the show notes. You've got his YouTube page. That would be like a first stop for me. But um, also his Instagram. Go check out his music on Bandcamp. And uh, we're going to end today with a new, new music shout out. So his new music shout out is actually uh, from his recent release called Severed Seas. And I actually picked uh, the tune Eons because you can hear the most going on with him manipulating the tape and editing and doing cool creative decisions with the music. So like he mentioned in the chat before, this is actually an album he did for a label that kind of fell through. It dissolved. So he sat on this for a while and released it. And it's really great. I love the vibes of it. So Sit back, relax, enjoy Eons by Amulets, Randall Taylor. And as always, you can get in touch with the podcast at Make More Music uh, Podcast at gmail.com, or you can find us on Instagram at make.more.music. If you enjoyed it, please share it with a friend, give a rating and review, um, and spread some more love. Okay? So remember, give more grace, share more love, make more music, and let's hop into this Eons by Amulets.